you know and they had been trained so thoroughly by the rabbis that they did not realize the very form of the word Elohim they just assumed Elohim translates God singular singular no problems but actually no 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 196 times minimum in the Tanakh that word Elohim is not just a plural in as they try to tell you, plural intensive or a majestic plural. It is simply a plural in number. Let's take the most basic thing which Christian and Jew agree on, the Ten Commandments. Okay? Let, let's go to the first commandment, right? Exodus 20. We're going to jump over to Exodus 20. Let's, we're going to see the first commandment in Exodus 20. Okay. Here goes, Exodus 20 and verse 2. Anachi Yahuwah Elochecha, Asher Hotzitecha, Me'eretz Mitzra'im, Me'bayet Avodim. Lo Yehyelacha Elohim Acharim Al Panai. Now let me translate that for you. Anachi Yahuwah Elochecha, I am Yahuwah your God. Asher Hotzitecha, Me'eretz Mithraim, which brought you out from the house of Egypt. Eretz Mithraim, Beit Avodim, the house of slaves. Amen. We ain't slaves in the kingdom of God, folks. We are sons and daughters. Praise the Lord. There are religions out there where they just have a whole bunch of slaves. But that is not the kingdom of God. The kingdom of Yahuwah is made up of a family and we are children of God through his son, our Lord Yeshua the Mashiach. But anyway, that's, that's by the by. Okay. So, Anachi Yahuwah Elochecha lo yehyeh lecha Elochim acharim al panai. Lo yehyeh. You shall not take for yourselves Elochim Acharim gods plural and it's exactly Elohim here Acharim other other gods Alpanai on top of my face or before my face you see that the the ten words or the ten commandments the very first commandment which God gives in the covenant of Horeb includes the word Elohim as a noun and a masculine noun and a plural noun Elohim Acharim and that is the same exact word used there at the beginning of Genesis Bereshit bara Elohim bara, He created Elohim He created gods so we find or mighty ones we find that the, 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 the verb in the singular pulls that Elohim into a kind of unity but with its plurality included. And so we find that the, the, the shadowing, the foreshadowing of the Christian revelation of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Or the Son the Spirit and the Father. Ben Ruach Abba. The interesting thing about the verb to create, it is also composed of those very three letters. Ben, Abet, Resh, Aleph, Bara. Same three letters repeated, which represent the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, now some of you may still be a little bit concerned about the fact that I seem to be making out that there is this kind of plurality in God. It's not God one, Shema Israel Yahuwah Elohenu Yahuwah Echad. But did you hear what I just said? Let me translate that. Shema hear Israel Yahuwah Elohenu Yahuwah, our God, Yahuwah Echad, Yahuwah is one, or Yahuwah is unity, Yahuwah one. Now that is the Shema. 
That is the most important command in the whole entire Torah. Jesus himself said the first commandment is the greatest commandment and it is this Shema Israel Yehua Elohenu Yehua Echad and you shall love Yehua your God with all your heart soul and everything else we too are threefold beings yeah we are Lev Nefesh and Me'od when it comes down to how, what we are to love Yahuwah our God with so we have the threefold aspect of Yahuwah Shema Israel Yahuwah Eloheinu Yahuwah Echad and in that threefold aspect we have to love Yahuwah our God with all of our Lev all of our Nefesh and all of our Me'od so what do we see here that Yahuwah is our God Yahuwah praise his holy name Blessed be his holy name from this time forth and forevermore. But also Elohei, that comes from the same root as Elohim. It's the same noun, masculine, plural, but it's got a new on the end. It's got a, 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 a suffix, which is the, third, uh, the, the, the plural, common, our God, possessing. Yeah, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah Echad. Now, if it's not Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah Echad, it may be Yahuwah Elohecha, Yahuwah Echad. But either way, the word there in the text is Elohei. Noun, masculine, plural. Now, Echad is a very interesting word as well. That also occurs in other places in the Bible. Now, Echad here means one. So obviously, it's referring to the unity of the Godhead. Very important, because Moses was writing what Yahuwah was revealing to him, and Yahuwah chose to use the word Echad. But where else did he use it? Well, he used it in regard to Adam and Eve. And he said, Adam and Eve would become Echad Basar. They would become one flesh. Two persons, Adam and Eva become one flesh Echad Basar or more accurately or just to parallel that three persons the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit are one God one Elohim so we see that the word Echad is used here to include two but actually counts as one just as in the Trinity we have three but they are actually one now, I'm not trying to get around the mystery here I know there's a mystery here I know this goes beyond your comprehension and my comprehension and this is a revelation of the Holy Spirit but let's just get it straight hey this is not alien to Judaism this is not alien to Jewishness this is right here in the Torah Amen now this is a piece of paper I slapped here. But it's right here in the Torah. Okay, so Echad includes a, a, a somehow a, 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 a something inside it, more than one. There's another example of the word, use of the word Echad. And that is when uh, the people of the earth, they were Echad Am. They were one people. But that one people consisted of many persons. So we have plurality with unity. So now we understand this. Let's just go a little bit further so that you can understand that I'm not just making this up out of my head. Let's look at the Genesis 126. Genesis 126 says this. Ve Yomer Elohim 